So it's been a couple of weeks since I've had the camera out here at Ivy Cottage. Uh, there's been a couple of things that have gone on. Some went, some, some things went right, and some things have gone very, very wrong. So uh, I've a bit of catching up to do. Uh, there was uh, obviously Christmas was uh, going on there. So you know, I, I, was, I was here on site, but I just didn't take out the camera. I was a little bit lazy. So we have to do a bit of a catch up. So. I've got Wolfie here beside me and uh, Demolition Dave and Wolfie decided to get me a, a present over Christmas so I'd just like to show everybody he got me a, a wonderful t-shirt and just so you can see it there I'll step forward onto the camera I, I don't know what the message is about can't work, quite work out what that says uh, my eyesight isn't that great anyway there you go thanks very much for the t-shirt Wolfie and Demolition Dave unfortunately due to the circumstances at the moment I don't have Demolition Dave with me because travel is a bit restricted but but uh, that's just the way it is at the moment. So, another thing that I uh, got sent in the post from a very good friend of mine is uh, a lovely, in fact, two of them. There's two little posters here. And I'm just gonna have to open them up there because it's very nice when people go to the effort of uh, doing something nice. So, this is from my friend Jer, and I hope you can see that okay. It's a, a picture with myself and Wolfie and my beloved Aldi Kango Hammer, which I have to say has been doing a tremendous amount of work and is still holding up. So Ger, thank you very much for going to the effort, taking the time and the expense of posting it to me. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, so there's a few other things that have happened here at Ivy Cottage. Uh, my old wheelbarrow that I had before this one uh, gave up the ghost, so I would invest in a new one. And also my uh, power gave up, my electricity supply gave up. Uh, so the electrician had a bit of a look at that there, but there's, there's nothing he can do with it for the moment. It's sort of uh, more the ESB side of things that have gone wrong and I don't want to mess with that for the moment. So uh, I'd go and get a generator as well to keep the power going. And thankfully my father helped me out with that, so that was, that was nice, because as I said, money is a bit tight uh, trying to get this place done. And as I'm going to show you in, the, in a moment, things haven't gone quite right here. So I had to take out the floors in the uh, new part of the house in the extension. And the reason for that is to make them eco-friendly and make them dry. There's definitely moisture coming up through them, even when the, the uh, house, when I bought the house out there, there was clearly moisture coming up through them, you could see it. So I knew that there wasn't a proper damp proof membrane underneath there. So I started to dig down and what there was was there was um, a screed on the top, there was about an inch of polystyrene, then there was about four to eight inches of concrete, it did vary. And then underneath that there was a bit of polythene in some places. So that wasn't sufficient. But what I, what I found was when I dug close to the wall to see what I had there, I found there was no foundations because I could drive a crowbar underneath the walls. Now if I removed all the flooring out of the extension and the walls were just left, well then they're going to sink and they're going to fall down. So unfortunately I had to get rid of the whole lot of it. Now that's put a dent in my budget and it's taken a bit of time and the estimate of between 7 and 10 skips needed for getting rid of all the, the rubble off the site has surpassed 13 skips now at this stage. So it all costs money. Now I have kept it tight by uh, taking it down. My family's given me a bit of a hand. My girlfriend's given me a hand. So you know we've, we've been taking it down bit by bit and that's part, part of the reason why the camera hasn't been on. We've been you know trying to get it done and uh, also dealing with the, the bad news of that and the budgetary problems that it's going to bring. Uh, is a bit upsetting. However, with 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 something bad, there, there can often be something good if you look for it within something bad. And the good news is, is I can now build whatever I want back there instead of trying to patch up what was already there. So I've decided to actually build an entirely new extension, and I'll bring out the plans to show you. Uh, I'll try and film that later on today. Um, but I, I've made a bit of a plan, very, very simple. It will be an exempted development because it's under 400 square foot. Nice and simple, but will do the job just perfectly. And what I'll end up doing is having a nice pitched roof at 45 degrees running along the new extension into the back of the old house. So I won't have any low pitched roofs anymore, which is a wonderful thing. So that's just one of the updates. I'm going to show you around because there's been bits going on and I've been doing bits and pieces along with all the other jobs. So I'll just bring you in for a little look. I'm a truck driver, that's what I do for a living. So I've got uh, what's called a zero hour contract. I think a lot of people are familiar with that, especially under the current circumstances. But uh, it sort of suits me at the moment in that when I don't have work, I can be working here. And when I do have work, obviously I have money coming in. So that's a good thing. It also allows me to have a bit of time to look after my back. Uh, I packed it up there over Christmas and was laid up for a week. And with a bit of physio and that sort of thing, I got back going again. 
But uh, yeah, my back takes a toll. I keep going on about it, but it's just something that's in my life. It's one of those one of those little problems that you have. Um, so that's it. So when I when I don't I don't know if I'm going to be working the next day or not. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, and, and that suits me just fine. I'm very happy with that. But uh, what it means is I sometimes I don't have a skip ready for getting on to the next section. So when that happens, then I go and do something else because I try and keep this project moving all the time. So there has been a couple of uh, times over the, especially over the holiday period when the, company, the, skip, the skip company was closed, obviously, um, I had to get on with other things. So what I've done is I've dug out the floors inside here completely down to about uh, 35 uh, centimetres below the finished floor level, ready to build back up. I've been researching that a little bit as to what I need and uh, that's, that's what I need to do. I need to put in hardcore and there's going to be a damp proof membrane or sand damp proof membrane installation so on concrete and all that sort of thing going in. So I need that depth to bring back up a proper floor and obviously with this old house built over a hundred years ago there definitely wasn't any damp proof membrane under the floor. So and, and uh, actually the soil that I did dig out was quite wet for, for quite a while down. So that's it, so uh, sure I'll give you a look around. The other thing I've done is I've taken the stairs out, uh, that was sort of in the way and uh, it was resting on some of the floor that I needed to dig out so that is gone. And one of the other things that I've started doing is uh, replacing the old wooden lintels. When these houses were built, what they did, as far as I can tell, obviously no one was here back then, so um, as far as I know what they did was they built up the walls and they stuck in the window frame and they built along the top of the window frame at the outside but on the back side, they put um, a piece of timber across the window opening as a lintel. The problem with that is 100 year old timber, a bit of dry rot and a bit of damp rot as well in there. The whole thing just falls apart and then that can lead to a wall collapse. And the last thing I want to do is to just leave a wooden lintel there going, ah, it'll be grand. Because 10 years from now or 15 years from now when I see the wall crack, I'm going to know why. So there's only one thing to do and it's a bit of, it's a bit, it's a bit risky pulling out the old wooden lintel, leaving it unsupported until you can get a new one back in. But with the windows still in place, there's a bit of support there. Obviously, the, the walls above it, the concrete has gone off in, the, in, in those from 100 years ago. It's a bit brittle, but it's still staying in place. So it's actually gone quite well, and I've got three of them done now. Uh, there's, uh, what is that? there's five more, no, four more to go. The two, the two windows at the end actually don't have wooden lintels. They, uh, they managed to bridge stone across them, which was uh, great for me. Um, so that's, that's good. So I have four more to go downstairs, but I've done the two upstairs at either end of the house and the window, the small little window to the side. Now that's another good thing. Uh, the stairs had no natural light coming into it, but because I'm changing the orientation of the extension at the back, I can actually keep this little window, which will be a beautiful feature, and it will also let a lot of light into the stair area, uh, which is good for safety. And also, it really, the you know, light really does cheer you up. It's a good thing to have. So, you know, if you're sitting there, especially at the moment, the way things are, and you're a little depressed, make sure to open the windows, get a bit of light in, get out for a walk, enjoy yourself, and, and take that as a practice for the rest of your life. You do need light, you need happiness, you need uh, air, you need to be out and about, you need to be exercising, you need family, you need friends. Uh, so this little window, it's just a bit of light, but it just it's another little piece that makes life a bit better. So I'm, I'm really, really happy that this, uh, this window is staying. So I'm going to give you a little look around and you can see all the bits that I've done. So you can see just behind me here, you can see the uh, stairs where it used to be and the first landing and then the stairs used to come back up this way up to the, up to the first floor. And just above me here you can see the little window and right above it you can see I've replaced the concrete lintel as well, or the, the wooden lintel that was there is now replaced with the concrete lintel. So that's uh, secure and ready to go. So that's one of the little jobs that I've done. And I will show you the, the floor next and then I'm going to bring you upstairs and show you the uh, two lintels that I've reinstated upstairs as well. So this is uh, where the old floor used to exist and I've dug down approximately just over a foot down into the uh, ground obviously there's a bit of rubble that's fallen down since I last did the lintel but I've come down just over a foot in depth from the uh, original level and that's all the way across the floor here in the old section of the house so it's going to allow me to put in a nice dry modern floor which will be fantastic for this house's future and for my comfort. So we're up here in the Ivy Cottage on the upstairs and uh, I've replaced the, the lintels over the windows 
I've, as I said, there was a wooden um, lintel running across here. Uh, there are signs of rot. I'll show you in a minute uh, what's, what I'm talking about. And uh, I've replaced it with two 100 millimeter um, concrete lintels. There was a there was a 200 millimeter piece of timber in here, and I've replaced that with two 100 millimeter uh, lintels. Part of that was trying just trying to get them upstairs the way to the lintels. It was handier to bring up two and cement them in place uh, than it was put in one big one. So that's done, and it's all filled in in between the um, the stonework. You can see that they built a bit of a an archway into it. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that is, because if the wood was there, I should have supported it, but maybe it's for that extra bit of strength, but it held up anyway, and if you consider the distance between here and here, and me taking out most of the support underneath it, the only thing that probably was holding it up was the window frame and a bit of stonework on the outside, and the fact that this is actually set, but uh, you do have to be careful when you're doing things like this, and I actually had somebody with me while I was pulling them out, just in case something would go wrong, that at least uh, I could get help. If I was on my own, perhaps if something happened, I wouldn't be able to get help because I might be, uh, I might be able to. <laughs> so we'll leave, we'll leave that there. Anyway, I had somebody with me just for safety, which is a good idea. If you're taking on anything risky, have somebody with you just in case something goes wrong. So there you go. So that's that one. I'll uh, bring over the piece of timber there that uh, the lintel lights just turned to the, down to the side. And if we go, if we pull that up, you can see there it's all starting to to rot away, and that's that's no good for supporting up. Um, a wall is just crumbling away. So yeah, so that's that's what that's what came out, and that's how wide it was, and that's how thick. And that used to I used to sit inside there. So now we have something better. It's going to last. It's going to work well. I still have to shore up the tops of the walls. They're still a bit loose, but that's something I'm going to do later on, probably after I've put up the roof timbers. So because I don't want to go up too high now, only have to take it back down again. The less I mess with these walls, the better, because they aren't. They're not. Uh, they're they're strong because of the amount of weight and the amount of stone in them. But the mortar is a bit weak in uh, some places. So the less upsetting and the less moving around, the better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll show you the window on the other side. Uh, as you can see, there's there's mortar everywhere. I've never been uh, I've never been trained in block work or anything like that. Uh, so. I'm a bit messy, I'm a bit messy, but I know that it will do the job and it's all, all going to be covered up with um, insulated plasterboard eventually, so it's not something I'm too worried about. But uh, it's got the job done and that's the idea here. Get the job done, do it to a good standard, make sure it's going to last and above all else at the moment is try and keep the budget down because it really is running out. <laughs> so that's it, I'll show you the other side now. And this is the other side and yet again. Same thing, I had to cut, a, cut the lintel in the centre with a reciprocating saw, thankfully I had one of those and uh, I managed to get blades in the co-op, a pack of five for five euro which wasn't too bad, nice big long blades and I was able to cut through it with these uh, which is, is great, you know as I said you don't, you don't want to be causing too much vibration and the reciprocating saw was very gentle. Uh, to use. I bought it many years ago in Argos. I bought this reciprocating saw for about 30 euro as far as no, and that's what I used. It was very handy. So that's the lintels, both sides here, and the uh, one over the um, window leading up onto the stairs. So the next job, uh, as far as lintels go, is to do the back door, the front door, and the two front windows of the house. So that's something I will do. But the first thing I want to do today is start removing the rest of the rubble at the back of the house. And I must bring you down and show you what's left of the extension. So as you can see, the extension back here is gone. Uh, completely demolished and the floor is taken out. There's a small bit of rubble left here to go into the skip, which is the job for today. Uh, and it's freezing cold, so it's good. At least I can warm up a small bit doing that. There's nothing exactly heavy there to lift at this stage. It's the last little few bits. Uh, yeah, it had to go. There was nothing else I could do about it. Uh, it was either leave it as it was and try and cope with it or remove it. If I kept it, it was never going to be energy efficient. It was never going to be dry. It was never going to be comfortable. It just wouldn't have worked. So, you know, there just was no option. It had to go. Uh, obviously there's a, a cost involved to getting rid of it, getting rid of all the rubble, the time element and that sort of thing. I was hoping to have this project at a turnaround by the beginning of January. Well, it's a week into January, I know this won't be on, on YouTube for another couple of weeks until it's edited, but it's, it's, um, it's a week into January and I've pretty much achieved what I wanted to do anyway. So it is back on the, on the build stage now with lintels and things going in. So it really, is, it really is going well. So right here behind me is a big pile of earth and that's been dug out from the floors inside the old section of the house. Now it mightn't look like a very big pile on camera but I can certainly say that it was nearly 60 or 70 wheelbarrow loads of soil 
that we had to dig out and pull out of the flooring, so it, uh, it did take uh, a while. So I've left it here because uh, soil will always come in handy, especially around here where I'll need to put, uh, put back and fill in uh, things like when I'm putting out some of the, the bits of bad construction that are here, there's a bit of soil that could go back in instead, which would be handy. So it's only subsoil, but it will come in handy around the place and there's no point in paying for to get rid of something that you're possibly going to need in the future. Back in uh, episode two or three, I can't remember which one it was, I talked about uh, the copper cylinder and the few bits of uh, copper pipe that I had uh, left out of the house and there was a battery there as well and I said about uh, recycling it and it's taken quite amount of, an amount of time before I could get to a recycling centre. I didn't want to just drive there for the sake of uh, recycling the metal because well, why bother, why not just tie it in with something else? So a couple of days ago, I had uh, four or five jobs to do up in the city. So I piled all the metal I had into the back of the car. So what I had, what I had was I had the car battery, I had the, um, I had the copper cylinder, and I had the pipes that I'd taken all the copper pipe out of the house here. There's a few bits off the pump. And then also on top of that, I had all the old lead uh, off, the, um, off the edge of the porches that I'd uh, taken down. Although the lead was fairly rotten, I, I kept it anyway because it, it can still be recycled. So I put that in the car. Unfortunately, I forgot the car battery. What can you do? I put it there to bring and I just forgot about it. So it didn't get there. Anyway, a car battery will get you between five and 10 euro depending on, on uh, how big it is. So I'd say that was a five euro one. It was quite a small one, but anyway, it's, it's still there. So um, what I had was, I had, um, where is it? 29 kgs of lead. So you would think lead would be worth quite a bit of money and it's not bad. It came in at uh, 29 euro for my, uh, for my um, lead, so that's a, a euro a kg, which works out the rate, the rate for lead at the moment is a, a thousand euro um, a tonne. So obviously a euro per kg. These, uh, these figures fluctuate depending on the, the scrap metal markets as well. Sometimes it can be higher, sometimes it can be lower. Um, then I had uh, 20 kgs of um, copper. Uh, well, it's a bit mixture of copper and brass. There's a couple of brass fittings there and they just pile it all in together and give you a price for it. So the uh, the price for that, which would blow the socks off, you got 76 euro. So in total 105 euro back just for the scrap metal. So it goes to show if you are renovating, if you happen to be either near a scrap metal yard or if you um, if, if you can travel at some stage or you're going to be traveling anyway, don't go on, don't go especially because obviously you're burning diesel, you're taking away from the money you're getting. So what's the point? Um, so as, as I said, I have four or five jobs to do. Up we went. 105 euro back in my pocket, which has gone towards things like the wheelbarrow and the generator that I had to buy. So uh, yeah, don't throw out your scrap metal, bring it up there. Uh, county council sites, they won't pay you for it. You have to go to a dedicated scrap metal uh, dealer. This was uh, Powder Duff Dismantlers in Cork is where I went with this. And uh, 105 euro was a, a very nice thing indeed. So there you go. So there's the proof. <laughs> That's it. In fact, I'll, I'll bring it up there. You can, you can see the amounts per tonne and you can see the amount that I was paid and that sort of thing, so there you go, that's, uh, that's all of that. So, well worth doing, hold on to your scrap metal, make a few bob back, it'll help you along with the build. You all know that I'm very proud of my Aldi Kango hammer that I keep going on about. The whole base of the house here was made up of this um, concrete, so how it, um, how it was actually made up was, there was a plastic sheet on top of hardcore, there's this uh, lump of concrete, and there was an inch of uh, styrofoam um, insulation and there was uh, about uh, two inches of uh, screed on top of that. Now for the time it probably wasn't a, a terrible construction for a floor but on today's standards it's definitely not there and then part of the extension didn't have any plastic underneath it at all so there was no point in putting any plastic underneath it because water will travel through a floor anyway so it was a bit dodgy but since I love my Aldi Kango Hammers I'm going to sing its praises again. If you look at that there, it's, it's five and a quarter inches of, um, of concrete and in places it got thicker, you know, even for the example there, I've got six inches of concrete and in some places it went to eight inches and obviously other areas it was thinner, it was a bit all over the place, but that Kango Hammer didn't give up, it's done all the, the um, destruction of the porches and the floors and the porches, it's done walls, it's done the chimney, it's done the floor and it's still going strong. Uh, I don't expect anything more of that Kango, it's paid for itself uh, three times over. A hundred and, what was it, 123 euro, 117 euro, I can't remember what it was, but it was just over 100 euro and uh, it's, it's just, it's done a fantastic job. What a great tool. So if you ever need uh, to do a demolition job and you look in the Aldi catalogue and there it is, the Kango, pick one up. It's just absolutely fantastic. 
now with all that physical work that I'm doing, I have to take breaks and uh, it's a good idea just to take a break every so often. And it's just about lunchtime anyway, so I have the pot of water on there for a cup of tea, which will uh, warm the hands a small bit. And uh, of course a cup of tea is always nice. Uh, one of the things that uh, also went wrong that I'd forgotten to talk about was the uh, pump packed up here in the pump house. Now it was an old overground pump and I had planned to replace it anyway. So I got onto a company there and they've, um, they've put a lovely new submersible pump uh, down in the well. So instead of, uh, instead of the pump sucking the water up or even pushing the water out and therefore sucking the water up, um, what I've got is I've got the pump down underneath the ground and when that rotates it pu pushes the water up to the surface. So it means the pump can never lose uh, water. You don't need to prime the pump or anything like that. It just As soon as it starts running it starts pumping water. So that's great. So uh, at least they can have a, a cup of tea with some nice fresh water. Now, I must get, must get on with things. Uh, time's dragging on now. And all I've been doing is talking to the camera and I need to get some work done. But uh, before I do, I just uh, inside the uh, poster that Jeremy Allen sent me was a bit of bubble wrap. And right inside that, all the way wrapped up, very nicely indeed, is, of course, your keys, because I'm a trucker. So this is mine. You can't have any. I'm eating it now just before I get going. Give me loads of energy. You can't have any. It's not happening. Go away. Get your own. Bye bye. So it's about half three in the evening and uh, I've been working away on the base behind me and I've most of the rubble gathered up into a small little uh, few piles at this stage, the rest of it is in the skip and I'm very glad to be at this stage because it was my plan to be uh, at the beginning of January having all the destruction done, all the demolition uh, done by the beginning of January so I can start building and that's what I've actually started to do as well by putting in those lintels and stuff, it's, it's starting to turn into the building side of things instead of all demolition. So it's a great feeling. I feel really satisfied, really happy that at long last I'm going to start building something, which is what I wanted to do all along. It's unfortunate that the extension had to come down, but there was no other option there. That's what I had to do. So I'm going to crack on, get the last bit of it done. Uh, there's some more jobs to be done. I must um, take the render off the outside of the house. Uh, it's all, it's all uh, sort of crumbling and old and they've um, put new render over the old render and the old render's falling off so it's, it's just a mess so I'll take that off as well. That's uh, one of the things I'd have to do. I need to steady up the tops of the walls on the, uh, on the eaves and up by where the wall plate is there. I must just uh, sort that out and just uh, uh, firm it up a bit and maybe rebuild a section of it. It's, it's one of the things I have to do. But all in all things are going really well. Uh, I've been on to an architect as well to get uh, drawings drawn up for the plans. I've already drawn my own set of plans, but obviously they need to be done properly. So at least I know uh, what to ask the architect for what I'm looking for. So that's it for the moment. I must crack on, get some more done, and uh, I'll see if I can take the camera out before it's dark and uh, have a, a look at the base all clear.